So you get zero if you don't do it with me or you get something if you do it with me and we're, we're not that far off. I just bought a hoarder house that I'm gonna fix up and flip for profit. Now in this video, you're gonna get to look over my shoulder and watch how I found the deal, negotiated and made an offer and got the deal at my desired price. All that and more coming up. This video is brought to you by 10K Club, a program that pays you $10,000 for finding ugly houses. Learn more at my10kcheck.com. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton and I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses. And after doing a thousand deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. As a full-time real estate flipper, I both wholesale and fix and flip. And this new hoarder house deal that I'm gonna showcase on this video is a fix and flip. And what I hope to do is show you behind the scenes an in-depth look at how I put this deal together, including a live call breakdown of how I negotiated the deal. Now this property came out for sale on market with a real estate agent in one of my remote markets where I flip houses. When this property came out for sale, there are two things worth mentioning. First, it's a hoarder house and full of junk. Now, I've already started rehabbing the house and it's taken like five 40-yard dumpsters so far to remove all of the seller's junk. Not only was it full of his stuff, it was in enough disrepair that it will not qualify for traditional financing and is a cash-only sale. Now, this is very significant when looking at deals. Let me explain. Traditional financing is for a homeowner to get a bank loan to buy a property, but a traditional bank will not lend on a house that is not livable and functional. So if it has a bad roof or it's missing the bathroom sink like this house, the bank won't lend on it to a homeowner. And if a home can't pass a mortgage inspection, a homeowner is unable to buy it. We call this a cash only property, meaning the only buyer that can purchase the home is a cash buyer or an investor who's using some form of unconventional financing, such as a rehab loan called hard money. Now, the reason why that's so significant is because it limits the available competition to just cash buyer investors like me. If the home was in livable condition and it could pass a mortgage inspection, not only would I have to compete with other investors, but also homeowners, and homeowners will always pay more than investors, making it increasingly more difficult to get the deal. So my greatest chances of getting a good deal on market are distressed cash only properties like this one. Now the second thing worth noting is that this property was advertised for sale as a short sale. It said in the listing, subject to third party approval. And if you don't know, a short sale is when the seller owes more than the home is worth and the bank is willing to accept less than the amount still owed on the mortgage but I ended up buying it for just enough to pay off the loan in full and avoided having to do a short sale, which you'll see. Now, when this property came out for sale, the asking price at 134,700 immediately caught my attention because it was a really low price given the values in the neighborhood. So I knew that I had a very short window to try and get this deal locked up. If I wait around, other investors will come in and someone will inevitably pay more than I'm willing to pay. So I ended up getting this deal and I'll show you exactly what I did, so keep watching. But in order to make an offer, I need to calculate my maximum allowable offer or MAO. So let's talk about the numbers on the deal. I estimated about 25,000 in rehab costs to basically update the kitchen and baths and carpet and paint. And after looking over all of the renovated sold homes called comps in the area, I decided that I could resell this home for around 230,000. And since right now, as of this recording, I'm following the 70% buy formula when I fix and flip, that means that I need to buy this home for 70% of the resale value, less the cost of repairs, which is 136,000 as my max allowable offer or MAO. And remember, it came out for sale for 134,700. Now, if you're unsure how I arrived at that number and you'd like to see an in-depth explanation on how to estimate the cost of repairs and the after repair value, including how I look up comps and how to calculate the house flipping buy formula, I'll put a few video links in the description below that really break it down for you that you can check out later. 
But after spending a few minutes to get to my offer price, it was time to call and make an offer, which we're gonna to cut to that live call in a minute. But first, I wanna explain my strategy when making the offer. Since this property is on market, my initial goal was to follow my double dip strategy where I contact the listing agent directly and I offer to let him write the offer and represent me as the buyer's agent. That way he gets 3% for the listing and 3% for the buyer side for a total of 6% commission. This is technically called dual agency and it really motivates the listing agent who represents the seller to work really hard to get me the deal. This gives me a competitive advantage over other investors who are using buyer's agents to make offers. And since it's priced so well, I need every advantage I can get. Now, if my double dip technique is unclear to you at all, I'll put a link in the description box below with a video that really explains it in detail. But unfortunately, when I called, the listing agent told me he does not do dual agency and is only willing to represent the seller. Now, this happens all the time. Some agents are uncomfortable representing both parties. As a matter of fact, there are, I think, like 14 states that do not allow dual agency because it's a conflict of interest to represent both buyer and seller. So instead, I went for the next best thing, and that's what's called designated agency. Designated agency is when another agent in the same office as the listing agent represents me as the buyer's agent. Now, this was a Keller Williams brokerage, and most agents work as a team, and that is exactly what happened with this listing agent. His name is Chad, and he referred me to an agent on his team in the same office who he works closely with named Corrine. Now, take a listen to my initial call with her, and keep in mind, this is minutes after this property came out for sale. So I'm an, I'm an investor, I wanna make a cash offer. Um, I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you write the offer for me. Okay. Are you able to do that? <clears throat> yes, I am. Okay. So what were you thinking of offering? I think I can come in pretty close to ask price. And your name is Jerry? Jerry, yeah. Okay, when would you like to look at the property? I don't need to look at it. Okay. I've seen enough. <laughs> okay, let me call him. I'm going to find out what's going on and then we can construct the offer. Yeah, and so I'll what I'd like to do, because I'm sure you're aware of this, but it's it's competitive market. You know, I'd like to come in at like a full ask, full full asking price cash. Um, I don't know where it's at in the short sale process, how, how quick they are for approval. It says subject to third party, so it might sit around for another six months. But what I don't want to do is... Mm, depends. Okay. Depends. I'll, find, I'll obtain all that information here and I will call you back. What I don't want to do is drag our feet for a couple days and you get 27 showings and 14 offers, you know? No, no, no. I work very thoroughly. I'm on, I'm on the team. We okay. will have this written up by tonight. Yeah, just know that I'm letting you guys write it, cash, that way, and then let's try to get the thing locked up. That's what I would prefer. Okay. All right. Well, we can have it locked up by tonight. Okay. okay. All right. Thank and you. came directly to me because I'm a buyer's agent on his team. I handle all that for him. Great. Thank you. Okay, so she didn't know at all what was going on with this property. You know, she's not the listing agent, but she was very eager to work with me. She promised to get with Chad, the listing agent, and get back to me. Notice how I reiterated time is of the essence and we cannot wait around or there will be other offers. So she called me back a few minutes later and let me know that it doesn't have to go through short sale if I'm willing to pay a few thousand dollars more. She said title is working on the final closing numbers, but it's really close to being able to pay off the loan and all of the closing fees and not go through a short sale. She also reassured me that I'm going to get this deal. Take a listen. Okay, I have some good news for you. Okay, what is it? Okay, uh, it doesn't have to go into a short sale, short sale status, okay? Okay. Chad's going to um, figure out the magic number so we don't have to deal with multiple offers or anything. Okay. okay. Uh, if anything, it might only be 1000 to 2000 over the asking of the 135 and we'd have to close it out in a week and it would be yours. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, I guess let me know. Yeah, let me know exactly. Call the title company and figure some things out. So okay. We can write the offer. He's gonna get back to me. We can write it tonight. You know, I'm gonna need proof of funds. I can. I can okay. send you that. I can send you. Um, text me your. Text me your email, and I'll send you over an offer sheet which has like you know the name and stuff like that. Okay, great. And then we can knock this out um, tonight by tomorrow morning. 
um, get it all wrapped up, and then set a closing date to our title company. Perfect. Which is first choice title. Okay? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Can you like, I don't know, market pending or stop showings or something like that? Or what? how are you going to manage that if it's all day before we get a contract? Right. He's not going to take anything, okay? So okay. A, I'm on his team, and B, we're already working it out so it doesn't have to go into a short sale status. Yeah. Okay? We're just working on it, okay? Trust me, all right? I'm very trustworthy. Okay. okay? You're gonna, I'm not going you, to show you one thing in one hand and do another. Okay, okay, so you're going to get this for me. I'm going to get this for you. But you might have to go one or two over because uh, you've got to get the numbers from the title company and all that. Okay. So if I'm understanding you, one or two over would be enough proceeds to keep it from having to negotiate a short sale with the bank. Correct. Got it. You get it in a week. Got it. Perfect. Yep. All right. Yep. And there's no hassle. It's just and are they close it out in a week. So I'm not even going to get to you till tonight. Okay, but just know everything's going well. I'll text you my email address right now. Uh huh. And that we'll, we'll handle all this this evening. Okay. okay. And I use Dot Loop. That's so fine. Everything's electronic. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And we'll, we'll knock this out between tonight and tomorrow. All right. And Kareen, yeah. I'm, I'm your guy when you get stuff like this. Call me. Absolutely, because all I do is buy Jerry and I'm in all the markets. So okay. We can do a little later tonight. Perfect. Okay? Thanks for all your help. <laughs> all right. So no short sale needed and we close in like a week. Now she told me she'd have all the paperwork over later that day and promised me I would get the deal. And did you catch that she asked for proof of funds? Proof of funds is almost always required when you make cash offers with on-market properties with agents. They want to see that you have access to funds to buy the house. And if you're a pro or prime level subscriber to my house flipping deal management software called Flipster, you get unlimited custom proof of funds letters for as many offers as you want. I also have over 100 asset lenders and multiple tools for doing fix and flip deals with 100% funding. Now to learn more about Flipster and see it in action, just go to getflipster.com. I also told her that I would send an offer sheet with all of the information she would need to write the offer. Now remember, as the buyer's agent, she is going to use her state approved forms to write the offer and I'll give you my agent offer sheet as well as agent scripts for making offers for free. Just go to agentofferscripts.com to download that right now. Now I also did a detailed video which walks you through everything you need the agent to include in that offer, especially clauses that will allow you to wholesale the deal. And I'll put the link to that video in the description below for you. Now at this point, I'm at 135,000 on my offer and I'm okay if I've got to come up like two or 3,000 on this one just to get the deal done. I don't always do that. Most of the time I hold really strong on my number, but I was willing to do that to avoid a short sale. And about an hour later, she called me back with the final number that I would have to pay to buy this house if I wanted to close quickly and avoid the short sale process. And I wasn't happy with that number. Take a listen to how I handled it. You just texted me this number here. That would be what it would be for you at closing. Okay, shoot. Yeah, that's figure. Yeah, that's just a little too tight. I mean, I really, really wanted to be at 130, but I thought, you know what? If I can get it done, I'll come up a bit at that because it's listed at 134.7 or something. Um, but right, now those we're... Are your, those are your closing costs. That's everything out the door. Do the title company. But still, I mean, I would normally have about $500 in closing fees or whatever. So I'm at 146. I'm at 140,600 right why now. Would you, why would you have that? Because you, you have to pay taxes, certain taxes on it. No, not as the buyer. Not as the buyer. I pay a title fee okay. and some recording fees and a little bit of prorations and maybe, and that's it on the buy. I can get those, but these numbers are super tight. So we're not doing anything on our end. We're not jacking it up. We're not. It's just that's what it's going to take to do it without it going to a short sale because of what she owes. I mean, if you, the only way I could see things happening is if you guys help out on some commission since I end up unrepresented. But I don't, you know, if you're not able to do that, I get it. But well, we're not. You're not paying commission. She is. Well, I know that. But I'm just saying... If you back, let's say that my commissions are just backed out of the deal since I'm there's no buyer's agent. Okay, but we're not going to do that because I am your buyer's agent. Well, I know that's why I wanted to go directly to the listing agent because then. But then he would have done a six percent, or he's going to get multiple offers on this place. Maybe you're misunderstanding me. 
If he gets a cash offer from a buyer's agent, he gets 3%. Correct. Well, if I come in and we get it done, but if I come in and we get it done and he says, I'll take 1% and represent you. Chad, Chad never does that. He never, never, ever cuts his commission, ever. Yeah, but I guess you're misunderstanding me. So follow my logic with me, okay? Yep. Chad gets 3% no matter what happens, right? Right. He's the listing agent. He gets 3%. If he works with me, he gets 4%. If he doesn't work with me, he gets 3% because a buyer's agent's going to get their 3%. So there's a benefit to working with me. I, I'm fine to give him the full 6% or give you 3%. He gets 3%. I get all that. That's totally fine. The problem is, is we're a little bit not, off. Well, you're off, right. But he's, you know, I mean, that's cutting me out of the deal. He, either way, the, the seller's already expecting to, to spend 6%. I know, but we can give them, we can give that, we can take that off the closing and it nets out the, the cost. So for example, so let's just, let's keep it at your number of 140. So that means, okay. that means you're making $4,200 in commission. Correct. If I don't buy it and we say, no, it doesn't work. Another buyer's agent comes in, you get zero. Right. So you get zero if you don't do it with me or you get something if you do it with me and we're, we're not that far off. So I guess, are you willing to take a little bit less? Maybe well, I, I don't know if he's going to let me take less because he's, um, he's pretty strict about us and our worth and as agents. Well, why would he do that? He would. Like you're giving 3% to somebody else or give 2% to you. What does it matter? Okay, I'll go over this with him and I'll let you know. Okay? And I'll let you know what his feedback is on this. But I do know he's had multiple calls on the property. And I'll see how he feels about that so we can try to make this work. So what's your end number? The max I can do, and I'm, this is pushing, a, you know, more than I want to be, is 138. Like that's net, net, not a, not, you know, like I walk into closing with 138. Okay, so your max number is hold on. So he's telling you that your max number is at 140, and you will do it for 138. Correct. Net, net, not, not, you know, add on all these other fees. Like that's it. No, no, 138 bottom line. Yep. Okay, well, we might be able to work something out. So let me call him and let me see if uh, there's a way that he'll let us do that. Just let Chad know, you know, is there a way we can net this thing out for Jerry at 138? If it is, he'll get it done. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. So the total out the door price, including commissions and closing fees and everything to get the deal done without having to do a short sale was $140,600, which is... $5,300 more than list price and my original offer. And like I said, I was okay to come up a little bit more, but I didn't want to come up any more than $138,000. Now, I hope that makes sense. The seller is netting zero on this deal, but he's able to stop the bleeding and get out of his unwanted property and avoid foreclosure. So the difference of the price to get the deal done of $140,600 and the max I'm willing to pay of $138,000 is only $2,600. So come on, why am I making an issue out of $2,600? Because I'm a deal maker, it's in my blood. It doesn't matter how many millions of dollars I make flipping houses, and I do, I want a deal every single time. Hey, by the way, check out these, uh, check out these vans I got at Goodwill for like five bucks. That was a deal. Anyways, the way I tried to handle the $2,600 difference was to get the agent to take less in commissions. Now, as you saw in the conversation, she was having a hard time grasping that I was asking her to take less in commissions. Like I said to her, make something with me or make nothing without me. Now, if she wasn't able or willing to cut her commission, that's fine, but I already came up a few thousand dollars more than I wanted to pay, and I'm the easiest buyer in the world. So instead of a total of $8,400 in commission going to Chad and Corrine at Keller Williams, I was asking them to figure out how to make $5,800 in combined commissions work on the deal so that I would only have to pay a total of $138,000. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And guess what? They accepted, lowered their commissions, and I got the deal for $138,000 and closed a week later. Now, if you think I'm a negotiating rock star, leave a comment and say, Jerry, you are a flipping genius. So right now I'm in the middle of rehabbing this house and I'm not kidding that this was a hoarder house. It's taken like five 40 yard dumpsters literally to clean out a 1400 square foot house. 
Unreal. Now, if you think it would be fun to see the trash out, leave a comment and let me know. I've got some footage on that. And by the way, I'm always looking for good fix and flip deals. If you'd like to be a finder for me, I'll pay you $10,000 for every house that you bring me that meets my criteria. To register for a free training to learn all the details, go to my10kcheck.com. And check out a video where a brand new investor, Sam, found and brought his first deal to me and I paid him $10,000. I did a live interview and we talked all about his deal. So watch that now. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With over 600 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping. And I'll see you on the next video.